For many in the secondary market, the fourth Opel Astra, especially after restyling in 2012, is a very enviable option. Appearance, albeit not the most noble, but still of German origin. Manufacturability. However, is everything serene in terms of reliability? Sneaky jokes about the quality of Opel have not yet faded from memory. Mass sales of the fourth generation Opel Astra 5 door hatchback, which received the designation J at the factory, started in 2010, although 2009 should be considered the year of its premiere. Following in the same 2010, a wagon appeared, and in 2011 they were joined by the handsome GTC, a three door with an avant garde design. Buying Astra was not easy at first. The demand for the hatchback was great, but in 2012, when the sedan appeared, all attention turned to him. Motors of this model got a whole brood, but not the whole range was presented in Ukraine. Europeans were more fortunate, gasoline units with a volume of 1.4 liters, 100 and 140 horsepower, and 1.6 liters, 180 horsepower, as well as a 115 horsepower aspirated 1.6 plus 1.3 and 1.7 liter turbo diesels with power from 95 to 130 horsepower. There were also several gearboxes to choose from, 5 and 6 speed mechanics, a 6 band automatic, a robot was also offered, but if you stumble upon an instance with such a box, run away from it. The resource of this transmission is small. In general, there are no special complaints about the motors. They carry honestly, consume little, do not require repairs too often. But this is in general. Whereas in particular there are questions. If there are no special problems with naturally aspirated engines, then, as usual, you had to tinker with turbo versions. First, the dealers recommended a turbo timer to give the turbo time to cool down. But that's okay. As a result, the Opel turbines turned out to be not so lost in terms of resource, although many have already changed the turbine valve for 50,000 kilometers. But at the 1.6 liter turbo even at low runs, the pistons often burned out. The cooling system was capricious, hoses, tubes and other containers were leaking. Failures often caught the throttle assembly. Remember where to look when buying a car with a turbo engine. But in general, after aspirated, 1.4 liter turbo versions are considered the least capricious. Although if you figure it out, then they also have abundant statistics on the failure of valves on the intake manifold in their liabilities. Mechanical transmissions are rarely used for service. For the most part, only about replacing the clutch, good for 100,000 kilometers. But on the subject of automatic transmission when buying a used Astra, you should worry. Many, if you believe the forums, it is because of her that the car is being sold. When buying, pay attention to the box radiator. When it, or its hoses and pipes, is depressurized, the performance of the transmission is a big question. And not so much because of overheating, but because of the ingress of liquid into the hydraulic circuit of the box. To be honest, the quality of the Opel Astra resembles a zebra. Reviews about the car are strictly opposite. And positive just as for the sake of more. However, it is obvious to everyone that in terms of reliability, the guys from Russellsheim lost to their main competitor VW Golf with a devastating score. Visibility, ergonomics of the cabin and controls, sound insulation, quality of plastic, metal and paintwork. This car has a lot of gaps. According to reviews, the paintwork is a strong disappointment. Not only is it easily scratched even in the sink, many complain about peeling paint. Among the problem areas are thresholds, trunk lid, bumper and fender joints. A fair amount of complaints falls on the interior of the car. If purely visually, then everything is very, very decent. A little scary only excessive and slightly chaotic abundance of buttons. But in operation unpleasant things are found out. It is not so easy to expel crickets from the salon. Tightness is no good, outboard moisture can get into the cabin. And there are not one or even two ways of its penetration. Frequent failures in the operation of electronics force many to even sell a car whose driving characteristics they are basically satisfied with. So an experienced buyer will always find plenty of reasons to drop the price. Current radiators, oil seals, non-working electrical appliances, it is worth taking a closer look at the glasses, especially the windshield. Vibrations and noise during braking will give out gun brake discs. Especially in cars with a top-end engine, where the discs have a diameter of 321 mm. The suspension deserves special words. Opel was not able to stop her sores for many years. Take, for example, the problem of tire rod ends. The part is inexpensive, but you will have to apply for it much more often than usual. Rarely nursed more than 30,000 km. It happened that already by 50,000 km, the shock absorbers began to cry and tap. The rear multi-link is also not ideal. 
loads bent rods. The frail rear silent blocks of the front levers abuse the attention and time of a car mechanic. In a word, much of this can be revealed if you do not yawn when buying. You will have to choose, and it may not make sense to pay attention to annoying little things. Whatever one may say, the net operational resource of this model, given the generally acceptable cost of the car and its components, is quite high. Perhaps, for many, Opel Astra will be a happy and successful choice. The traditional McPherson strut front suspension is generally durable. Shock absorbers serve an average of 100,000 km, but they begin to sweat much earlier. The stabilizer struts live a little less. In steering, tie rod ends can live up to 70,000 km, but usually they begin to play much earlier. Six-speed manual gearboxes are quite successful in holding loads. But with aggressive driving, the synchronizers of the third and fourth gears do not withstand, which cannot be called a systemic ailment. But with the automatic transmission, the cooling system of which is tied to the engine, problems are not uncommon. Oil seals, pipes of the cooling system are leaking, and overheating the box entails more costly problems. The first suspect for a lack of fluid in the cooling system is the thermostat, especially for cars made in 2010 to 2012. Replacing the gasket will solve the problem, but most likely not for long. The expansion tank also flows willingly, a well-known problem. But frequent replacements are also possible in the electrical part, candles, ignition coils. The windshield is rubbed and cloudy. Water can enter the passenger compartment through a defective air conditioning drain hose, a leaky brake light above the fifth door glass, or an air intake under the windshield trim. Many are annoyed by the creak of the instrument panel visor, which has to be glued with a sealant. Wipers leave a fair amount of glass uncleaned. It happens that the reflectors of the additional turning section in the headlight melt. A faulty brake pedal sensor will cause the brake light to come on spontaneously or the cruise control to reset. Various software errors are not uncommon. Because of it, by the way, the dipped beam left on in the parking lot can easily kill the battery.